Today on the Topic Show, RNC Chairman Ron McDaniel resigns. Vivek on border bill having more money going to the Ukraine than the U.S. goes viral. Toyota to invest $1.3 billion into making an EV SUV. DocuSign to lay off about 6% of their employees. David Hogg's support for Ukraine tweet is ratioed beyond all belief. Anheuser Bush Stella Groundhog tweet is roasted as well. And GM to recall about 32,000 heavy duty trucks. All of that much more on the Topping Show. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in today. Today's episode of Topping Show is sponsored by Topping Technologies. Topping Technologies is an IT value added reseller and services company with a special proficiency IT security. Heck, I see their founder at least twice a day. Guess he's quite handsome and brilliant. He's me, you see, that's the joke. If you're an IT leader or business owner, you can reach the team at sales at toppingtechnologies.com. Also, trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of February. So, if you click that button, I would greatly appreciate it. Now, going over to the business part of the podcast, you have Toyota to invest $1.3 billion to make an EV SUV. Now, they made this amount of spent. They're going to make that investment into his flagship assembly plant in Georgetown, Kentucky for that new product line. They also know that this will bring up their total investments in EVs to nearly $10 billion. Well, some critique them for being late to the game since they were much more conservative in terms of their adoption of the newer technologies. I still think it's not a complete waste of money, but they're perhaps the best balanced company when every other company went all in in EVs, histor well, not, fa not historically, but famously General Motors reading the room wrong yet again. They went all in on EVs. GM makes no hybrids, except one, the Corvette, which don't get me started. Now, the biggest growing trend in the United States in terms of consumer preferences and what people are buying, hybrids is one of the largest growing categories. Toyota's made a lot of hybrids, but now they're going to lean more into EVs. So it'll be interesting to see if they really, I mean, how much sales are they going to get from this? Now, when they asked for comments, apparently someone did ask them for comment, and they weren't, they weren't just saying, you know, what are you doing? Uh, why? You're known for making the most reliable vehicles on the planet, bar none. And now you want to make electric vehicles, which are inherently less reliable and a terrible long-term investment. It's one of those things where a Toyota from the 90s and 2000s, or shoot, even Toyota Corolla now with just a trunk of bus engine, they'll last darn near a million miles because it's a good, <laughs> excuse me, it's a good old internal combustion engine, less variables that can go wrong, and less software, less batteries, you know. So those last darn near a million miles. Electric vehicles? No, not at all. Now again, when it looks like the president of the Toyota Kentucky plant, Carrie Creech, was asked for comment. She said, quote, Today's announcement reflects our commitment to vehicle electrification and further reinvesting in our U.S. operations. Generations of our team members helped prepare for this opportunity, and we will continue leading the charge into the future by remaining true to who we are as a company and putting our people first for generations to come, unquote. Ironically, electric vehicles require less people to produce, especially in terms of the physical labor to produce the product. So a little irony in there. So it'll be interesting to see. I just can't help but, and of course, you know, the, sit, the, the states and then the nearby city where the plant is, you know, all the politicians are all happy because again, in the short term, it's going to increase a couple more jobs, increasing, obviously this is a new product for the portfolio. So the HRC, it looks like that plant assembles around 550,000 vehicles per year and employs 9,400 workers. I'll be damned. So that is quite a lot of manpower over there. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to see what the long-term implications are for Toyota. This is a good strategic move. Because again, that's a whole new product category for them in the electric SUV market. There are other industry leaders already in that category. And I also debate how many, how big is that market really at the end of the day in terms of consumers who want to purchase it. But it will be interesting to see if this helps Toyota or hinders their future. Other interesting business news, you have DocuSign to lay off about 6% of their workers, even in the sales department. Now, a wise old mentor of mine once told me one of the safest jobs you could have, relatively speaking, is sales. As long as you could have a modicum of hard work and intel intellect, and you work hard, you'll achieve your quota. But some of those instances where, if you look at businesses, that's usually the last thing they cut. They'll cut, there's a lot of fat to trim at most companies, especially large ones in the tech industry. There's a lot of people have jobs, they don't really need jobs, or shouldn't, really don't have them. 
really don't need them, such as bid desk managers or someone who's supposed to approve on a discount. When I worked at Hewlett Packard Enterprise, if you wanted to approve a discount for a reseller, for a consumer, there are some instances where you had five, no less than five people have to approve that before the customer could actually get that new discount. Five layers of fat. And I would argue perhaps four and a half of them were useless. Because again, they want to make sure the company doesn't go negative, but do you need five people to approve that? Really? But nevertheless, it is usually the sales department, usually the sales. Now DocuSign, one of the most popular software companies on the planet. Most people, if you are signing NDAs or you're signing your new contracts or agreements, more often than not, the mechanism that you're using is usually the software known as DocuSign, where brilliantly enough, instead of having to print out the piece of paper and signing it, you just click the button and it does it for you magically. Well, it's technology, but seemingly magic for my parents. Now, specifically, they said they're going to cut about 6% of their workforce. Now, that translates to, because again, it's all about sample size, what does that quantify mean? That is going to translate to about 440 jobs at the company. Now, they also know that they are going to be cutting from, let's see here. Yeah, they actually specify it will be mostly in sales and marketing. Now, again, marketing is at times difficult to justify an ROI for that department or quantify the results for that department. It's one of those instances where depending on what marketing activities you're doing, like if you're putting your company logo on an F1 car or a billboard, it's hard to justify that in terms of when you ask a consumer, like, why are you buying this? Most of them aren't going to know or most of them aren't going to tell you, oh, yeah, because I saw your logo on a car. Brand recognition, yes, but in terms of translating directly correlating to sales, that's not so good. Now, humble brag here, topping technology is my tech company, much more, I'd say infinitely more accurate in terms of correlating marketing to sales. For example, every, with the caveat, it has to be $30,000 or more revenue, we're giving away a free flamethrower with every Q1 purchase. So again, very easy to quantify. That sale came from that marketing campaign. They're getting a free flamethrower that can, in fact, be mounted to an AR-15, also known as America's Rifle, which most, if all not Americans by now, already have at least one. So again, fun little plug, go to toppingtechnologies.com to learn a little bit more. Now DocuSign, it'll be interesting to see, they claim that this will increase their savings between 28 and $32 million as they attempt to also restructure the company to be more efficient. And of course, it'll be interesting to see, do they try to supplement those loss in manpower by using artificial intelligence or some AI technologies? They try to increase perhaps their e-commerce or in some instances you actually just buy it online or sometimes you buy it through a reseller. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. But again, this is not it's not a great sign when even sales are being let go at a company. I can understand, you know, maybe your bottom sales reps that again they've tried time and time again and maybe bad attitude. They might get let go. That's kind of the norm. But 440 jobs, those all vanishing that's let's just say again not financial advice but i'm glad i didn't invest in DocuSign, to say the least now going over to the culture part of the podcast you have david hogg support you for ukraine retweet is ratioed beyond all belief now this is thanks to his individual x or twitter profile and just going to his profile let me see here now mr david hogg Describes himself as a president, leaders we deserve, a March Our Lives founder and board member. He has 1.2 million followers. And he has a big orange red, no, big orange square in his name. Let me see here. And he specifically said, quote, if Ukraine fails... Or sorry, again, my speaking aptitudes, there are many. Some might debate there are more in the past. However, if you click the subscribe button, it may very well help assist me in my speaking improvements and my decreasing of those ineptitudes. Help me slow down a little bit with my pace of speech, maybe be a little bit more enunciation better, less stumbling over the words. I can't help but notice, when I first started the show, very little subscribers, and I made a lot more speaking blunders. Now, it's been a modicum of improvement as the subscriber count has gone up. So if you click that button again, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Back to my attempt at the quote from David Hogg on X Twitter. He says, quote, if Ukraine falls, it sends an extremely dangerous message to autocrats around the world. It's expensive, 
but it's a lot cheaper than World War III. We cannot give up on Ukraine. Putin must be stood up to. Unquote. And that, get, that got viral, as you might say. 1.2 million views, and yet, ratio to say the least, it got 8.3 thousand likes, which is basically nothing. Not to brag, but on my video last week, I got 13 likes on video. Though I would also argue for my audience, it is all about quality over quantity. We always have the best folks that are tuning into the show. Now, a little bit, do a little bit of fun math here today. Interestingly enough, public schools in the United States have a 32-year low for ACT scores, and yet they say teachers deserve more money. Teachers unions, fascinating their lack of performance, but they want more money. Nevertheless, since the schools are so utterly inept, for the most part, we'll do a little bit of fun math here today. So, Mr. David Hogg got 8,300 likes. And again, these statistics were wrote down 48 hours after he had actually tweeted. So, it's had time to brew, so to say. It says 8,300 likes divided by 1.2 million views. That gives us 6.91 e to the negative 4. So, you multi we're going to turn that into a percentage. So you multiply that by 100, that gives us 0 0.069166 repeating like ratio. Now, if you feel so inclined, we could also, we'll be generous. We'll round up a little bit for him. So 0.07% of the people who saw his statement liked it. Also known as nothing. Now, going to the top comments here, you have Tristan Tate chiming in. He says, quote, Fly to Romania. I'll get you across the border so you could sign up and fight. Won't be a problem, buddy. Unquote. Getting 16,000 likes. That is perhaps the best ratio I've seen all year. Bar none. Now I also have America memed. He says, quote, We don't care for Ukraine or Russia. It's not our problem. If you care for it so much, how about you go and volunteer for Ukraine? Unquote. Getting 1.5 thousand likes. I mean, we've already given them about $200 billion between cash, weapons, and other physical gear, $200 billion. And yet we still have broken streets, homeless people and veterans who need help in the United States. But we gave them $200 billion. I would also love to have a challenge. Perhaps let me know if you'd be interested in me doing street interviews. Maybe just going to people on the street and asking them, can you point out Ukraine on a map? And then tell me their top 10 exports and tell me the top three things they export to the United States. Again, I'd be fascinated to see how many people who have the Ukraine pin on their lapels and on their profiles, how many of them could identify those things? And then how could they justify the strategic value of the Ukraine to the United States? I'd be fascinated to see if they have any answer at all. Now going, and again, it's also one of the most corrupt nations on the planet. I mean, just even CNN and Wall Street, Washington Post, some of the traditionally much more left-leaning medias prior to the whole Russia-Ukraine conflict or war, whatever you want to call it, they all lambasted, they all critique Ukraine for being so utterly corrupt. And now everyone's pretending they're, you know, all, all trustworthy. Now going back to a couple comments here. Jeremy says, quote, this is literally you. Send guns to Ukraine, ban guns in the U.S. And it's the two buttons. And I got 827 likes. Actually, let me pull up David Cog's profile and follow him really quick. Because again, I'm pretty sure he's a famous anti-gunner, which, granted, I'm one of those folks who believe that everyone should have the ability to defend themselves and their family. That's a God-given right. The government shouldn't take that away from you. That being said, I want more more information, more viewpoints, the better. So he seems to be a, an anti-gun contrarian, or someone who's very anti-gun. So it'd be interesting to follow him and see what his perspective is, no matter how mentally vacuous they may be. Going back to the comment section. Karan Dog says, quote, so when are you signing up to help? Unquote, getting 777 likes. Vi Riley says, quote, I vote yes to sending David to go fight the front lines. Unquote, getting 389 likes. Rose of Sharon Mayer says, quote, um, Ukraine fell a long while ago, buddy. Are you sure you went to Harvard? Unquote, getting 446 likes. Although, hilariously enough, the public cultural perception of Harvard has dropped so much in the past 36 months. I almost wonder how many people really respect a Harvard degree anymore. Another topic another topic for another time, perhaps. I'm trying to see if there's anyone who agrees with him thus far. Well, let's see here. Conservative Patriot Pizza bitch. I don't want to say F minus for marketing, but she's not even holding up a slice of pizza. Nevertheless, this alleged pizza fan says, quote, 
You're one of the youngest but dirtiest scumbags America has to offer. You are a warmongering piece of shit. Unquote, getting 908 likes. Let's see. A lot of people saying Russia or uh, Ukraine fell long ago. A lot of people saying Ukraine had been, you know, historically a long uh, piece or historically had been united with Russia for a while. Military arms is saying, quote, well, Davy, it's time to STFU and enlist. Your demented buddy at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue will be sending more than money there here soon. Put your money where your mouth is. I'm cooking 641 likes. See a lot of people telling him to go and fight if he wants to. A lot of people pointing out the contrary, the uh, hypocrisy of him wanting to ban guns while at the same time giving the Ukrainian citizens all the guns we have and you know, unprecedented firepower. I mean, it's fascinating to see how quickly a country will go from anti-gun to pro-gun when all of a sudden they're about to be invaded or they're in a conflict. And we've seen this also with other countries like Israel. They very quickly became very pro-gun for the mass populace. Now, a great way to fend off bad guys in general would be to have an armed populace like the United States. Or, I should say, most states in the United States. A lot of people saying they'll buy a, a plane ticket to go fly out there and fight. Let's see here. Uh, let's see, Lord Radendolph Books says, quote, Tucker Carlson has just left for the Kremlin. Carlson quoted Putin. Putin said, quote, yes, David Hogg is on our pay of role for propaganda. His codename is Little D, unquote, getting 62 likes. So again, this is a fascinating cultural shift in the United States where throughout my lifetime, we've seen less and less public support for more um, increased in war conflicts and supporting other countries. Again, it's obviously it's not a majority of the United States or you know even 51% at this point, I wouldn't think. But it'll be interesting to see, as you see, as we see a decrease in the consumer, you know, in this case, the customer and the consumer is US citizenship, there's a decrease amount that actually wants to support those types of conflicts and put more resources to other countries than we do in the United States. But will that actually change any public policy? That'll be interesting to see. But let's just say I'm pessimistic to say the least. Other interesting cultural news, you have anheuser Bush Stella tweet about the groundhog is ratio to say the least. Now granted, this was posted about well, four or five days ago, so it's had time to brew, pun moderately intended. And they said, again, this is anheuser Bush's ex-Twitter profile. They say, quote, six more weeks of winter or not, we'll bet Pax and Tayu. My speaking up is no, no bounds. Again, if you click the subscribe button, it may very well assist with my speaking endeavors to improve that. We shall see. That's just a theory I have. Puxitani? I'll try my hardest, but again, it's a word you pronounce once a year. Nevertheless, they say, quote, six more weeks of winter or not, we'll bet Puxitani Phil had never seen the shadow this perfect, unquote. They didn't say it like the three stooges, like perfect, but they actually spelled it out, so it is spelled wrong. However, I appreciate a good wordplay. It's perfect, as in P O U R F E C T, as if they're implying you should, you know, pour a beer. Although they also have a picture of a beer bottle, which, unless you're ultra, you know, high flute and sophisticated, I wouldn't think you'd pour that into a glass. Again, I'm a beer fish aficionado. Well, it's also an Azure Bush product. I don't think a beer aficionado would ever actually drink that unless. Perhaps they're being tortured in a spy in some type of dystopian spy scenario. But nevertheless, they have a picture of three bottles of Stella Ortiz. Granted, they're not even open. I guess it does look better with the paper wrapper around the neck of the bottle. And again, in terms of views, it did abysmal. 2,437 views, which is nearly impossibly bad for a multi-billion dollar company with such a long, rich history, and yet that's how bad they've shot themselves in the foot. You could debate if it is worse than Ron DeSantis shooting himself in the foot with a seemingly 50 cal during his attempted run for presidency, or Republican nominee. But yeah, I got 2,437 views, and only 45 likes, which is, again, terrible to say the least. Now, not brag, but I, at one point, got 50 likes. Maybe, perhaps. I think it did happen one time. Probably. Maybe. But nevertheless, 45 likes for Anheuser Bush. And of course, they did hide some other responses. So we'll click the super secret button at the end when we go through the other comments. 
And again, does this inspire me to buy the product? And, and again, I'm not sure, maybe it would be in poor taste. Well, pun not really intended, it is an Anheuser-Busch and Bat product, but they're not even showing a cute little, what is it, not a gopher, groundhog? They're not even showing it. Now, again, I'm no million dollar budget marketing genius, although statistically speaking, my marketing has done better than Bud Light in terms of I haven't lost 30% of my business by doing a marketing campaign. So there's that. But why not have a cute little, even if it's not a real animal, have like a stuffed toy of a groundhog about to open up the product. Again, maybe that would piss off PETA for all 18 people who still support PETA. But that would have been cute, funny, entertaining. Maybe have some type of shtick where he's, you know, debating if he's seeing a shadow. There's, there's material and an opportunity to make this more of a compelling you know advertisement and of course ironically or hilariously they have a little faded print in the top right corner of this picture saying message for 21 plus when the same company paid dill mulvaney whose average audience is 15 years old they gave dill mulvaney hundred eighty five thousand dollars a couple of pictures and a video to promote their brand yeah they got the worst ro negative roi i've ever seen so it's ironic they're actually trying to make sure the product is only put and entertained and put in front of adults. And again, this doesn't is it's just a picture of their product. It doesn't inspire you to buy it. Doesn't inspire you to take a picture of it. Doesn't inspire you. I mean, and hilariously, I guess they are trying everything they can to build up the other brands. Again, Inez Bush and Bev has over forty beer brands in their portfolio. So, again, they know Bud Light, that brand's hurting pretty bad, even though they're going to try for a sports ball or a Super Bowl commercial, which maybe you'll get one, maybe you'll get 1% of your sales back because people worship sports balls in the United States, but, I don't know, let's go to the comments and see. Maybe, perhaps I'm alone in this assessment. Perhaps people in the comments are so impressed by this marketing campaign, they're going out and they're going to buy Stella today, buy the caseload. I mean, historically speaking, absolutely not, but let's dive in the comments and find out. See here. John B says, quote, fancy bottle, but not my favorite. I'll stick with gold old bud, but thanks. Interesting. So not necessarily a negative comment, more of a neutral comment, which makes me suspicious. If this is a real person, perhaps a Bud Light employee, maybe a bot, going to John B's profile. And again, nobody liked that comment. Not even Anheuser Bush and Bev, who apparently allegedly have employees left. And yet they couldn't take a fraction of a second to like that or just say, you know, appreciate if you're being a fan of Bud Light. Because again, this person's saying, oh yeah, I'll stick to good old Bud. And yet they, could, they couldn't take the one one thousandth of a second to like this person's comment. Which again, it's a fun little reminder to write, like this video. But again, it takes very little effort for them to, to do that. They couldn't even do that. They didn't respond. Now John B, going to his profile, he has 174 followers, joined in 2011. Let's see here. And he, I'll be damned. He likes, what is that kid's game, Wordle? So he posts original content and he doesn't just want gift cards. This is perhaps the second time in the past year we've seen that. He does repost for Bud Light, but a lot of his posts seem to be original thoughts and articles. I'm, I'm pretty impressed. That's a real... A real comment. I'll, I'll be damned. Let's see what else we got. Well, of course, the second comment, not so good. The second comment comes from just me two five two one five. Interesting name. And they say, quote, it's amazing how many ignore Bud's tweets. Unquote, getting three likes. Let's see here. Florida boy simply says six more weeks of boycotting. Unquote, getting one like. Curtis 67 says, quote, another AB beer not to enjoy. Getting two likes. Chance Demand says, quote, did Dylan switch to piss water, unquote? Getting one like. Let's see. Now there's a little disclaimer. Show additional replies, including those that may contain offensive content. Of course. Let's click the bonus button. Click that. Oh, it says posting unavailable. So I guess the person may have deleted it. And is that really it? It got eight comments total. And one was neutral. A couple were deleted. And the rest were just roasting them. That... That's perhaps the worst ratio I've ever seen. That's actually worse than some Bud Light ratios. Usually there's three or four robots in there or 
some just mentally vacuous people who just want free stuff. But in this case, there's one person who's just like, I don't really like that, but I like your other products, which it's kind of like a back backhanded compliment, perhaps. Now, of course, we do have the little hidden button, so we're going to click that. What are they trying to hide? It's, well, that's not too exciting. They just had one hidden response. They simply, it was a statement from Florida Boy, and he simply said, still boycotting. And it looks like 16 people saw that before that was hidden by Anheuser-Busch. So again, not a very, very compelling marketing campaign. Doesn't really inspire you to buy the product. Really doesn't tell you anything about the product at all. And again, they didn't even showcase... A, they spent 20 bucks on a cute little stuffed ground, groundhog. That would have been more hilarious or entertaining. And yet, I, I this really doesn't do anything. It reminds me you own that brand, which... I would also, I would actually argue how many, with how many people are actually boycotting Anheuser-Busch and Bev, you almost wouldn't want that. Because this is just going to remind people, oh yeah, you own that too. That's a reminder not to buy it if those people are participating in the Bud Light boycott. So, it'll be interesting to see how they do this year, but let's just say they're off to a pretty rocky start. Now, going over to the political part of the podcast, you have RNC Chairman Ronna McDaniel finally resigning about time. Now, she is known for being the head of the RNC and known for having perhaps a worse track record than the Chicago Bears, which is a historical football, sports balls team, who, growing up in the Midwest, every year my friends would say, oh yeah, they'll be better next year, like Chicago's economy or the crime over there. Spoiler alert, nope, never has improved. And historically speaking, given the trend, never will. Now, this was first, or one of the first people to post about this on X Twitter was Colin Rugg, although I won't say F minus for marketing. He's not holding up a picture of like a, a rug in his profile, though, to his credit, he is suiting up as all men should. Now, nevertheless, he says, quote, breaking RNC chairwoman Ronna McDaniel has told Donald Trump she'll be resigning after the South Carolina primary. Good. Here's what Vivek Ramaswamy had to say about McDaniel during the presidential de primary debates. Quote, we've become a party of losers. Since Ronald McDaniel has took over as chairwoman of RNC in 2017, we've lost 2018, 2020, 2022. I think we have to have some accountability in our party. Ronna, if you want to come on the stage tonight, you want to look at the GOP voters in the eye and tell them you'll resign, I'll turn over my time to you. Unquote. And as youth might say, roasted, to say the least. And yet, that is an exceptional point. I've had this debate multiple times with folks, and I always tell people, if you don't have faith in the leader, if you don't really believe they're doing a good job, if they keep failing time and time again, why would you think they're going to win the fourth time? Why would you donate to the RNC when they keep losing? I forget the actual quote, but there's something to the effect of Republicans are exceptional at stealing victory from the jaws of defeat. This is something around that vernacular because, again, they keep losing time and time again, and they're not doing anything different, which is the definition of insanity or the Chicago Bears, or some might debate the Dallas Cowboys, which they did win a Super Bowl. I believe the pictures are still stored on a floppy disk, which actually ages me quite a bit. If you are a youth and you're looking at your Word document in Microsoft, the little save icon, that is a picture of a floppy disk, which is another weird thing called physical media, which is how many people used to save their data. But I partially digress. It's one of those things where no one, there's record low donations to the RNC. It's so bad, she even said they might have to take out a line of credit for the next election. Which is almost impossibly bad. It's, and I see a lot of parallels with this with the NRA. For years, the NRA, and again, I always like to give them a modicum of credit because they do have some great safety programs. They do help a lot of people out. They do, they do some good. Now, the issue I had with the, R, with the NRA was Wayne LaPierre. Now that little Frenchman, he just time and time again would cave and not really move the really move the go post, or he really didn't achieve much. Now, again, they did some good things. They filed some good lawsuits. I remember historically, December 12, 2012, they sued Illinois successfully so that concealed carry for average citizens was now legal as of that date. But you look at other pro-gun organizations, you got Gunners of America, you have the Firearms Policy Coalition. They've been having a lot more wins in the courtroom and gaining a lot more rights. And there's a lot of people critiquing Wayne LaPierre, you know, whining and dining too much, not using his expense account properly. 
So a couple of years ago, I believe it was 2014 or 15, I did the like membership for the NRA. So they have my phone number and they, they like to call from, you know, for donations. And I would tell them every single time, hey, I appreciate it. I know you guys do some good. However, I'm not going to donate because Wayne LaPierre is the CEO. If he leaves, I will reconsider and possibly increase my donation to your organization. Now, thankfully, Wayne LaPierre, as of last month, is no longer associated with the NRA. He's stepping down. They claim for health, re health reasons. I don't think that's the primary or the real reason. But when I talked to all my friends, he was one of the major reasons no one would donate. Very similar to the RNC. She's leading a losing team. She's wearing sports balls more for you want, but why would you donate if you know they're not going to fight for the causes you believe in and they're going to lose? There's really no incentive. So I think this will be extremely positive for the Republican Party, and it'd be fascinating to see who they choose to replace her. And I suspect most of the comments will agree with me, but let's dive in and find out. One of the first com comments comes from Republican Review, and they say, LFG... Ronna Romney was an awful chairwoman who hurt the party more than she helped. Unquote. I got 900 likes. And Colin did respond saying, I wonder why. And it's a creepy picture of her, is it her dad or uncle? Whoever it is, Mr. Mitt Romney. And he, that got 877 likes. Guns and Golf says, quote, Finally, I wonder if we'll be using the hashtag hat, or resign Ronna 2,485 times that she, oh, sorry, let me, Again, if you subscribe, it may very well help assist with my speaking ineptitudes. I have a theory, and let's just say when I first started the show, a lot more speaking ineptitudes, blundering, tripping over myself, speaking too fast. And some might say I still do that. Fair. But there's been a modicum of improvement, I suspect, because there's been more increase in the number of subscribers. So, if you click that button again, I would greatly appreciate it. I will attempt that quote yet again. So, Guns and Golf says, quote, finally, I wonder if it was me using the hashtag, hash, Rana. Ron, 7,485 times that finally put her over the line, unquote. They got 552 likes. Paul Zupa says, quote, an RNC without Rana feels like Chris feels like Christmas all over again, unquote. Getting 195 likes. Give me three steps, says, quote, see your Romney. And it's a picture of her with the LinkedIn circle around her head that says open to work. They got 165 likes. Let's see here. Elon Musk's assistant journalist parody says, quote, spread, please spread the word, sign the petition below, make Scott Pressler the RNC chairperson. I thought it was just chairman. Nevertheless, I got 244 likes. Patriot Press says, quote, the future of the GOP is Vivek. He understands holding people accountable to their failures is the only way to correct course. I'm quoting 586 likes. And there's a lot of people calling for Vivek to step up to the plate or they think he'd be exceptional leader in that position leading the rnc and I'm, honestly i don't think that's a bad idea i'm not sure if that he would see that as a step down in terms of his political or career aspirations or, <coughs> or if he might see it as an honorary position but i think he could be pretty articulate and i think he would be effective at raising funds to the rnc which again is a big that's a big role of the job going down here we got one bad deuce and quote it's time for the republican party to start winning unquote getting 427 likes which, yes, it's long overdue. Mike Dispersa says, quote, bring in Scott Pressler, baby, unquote, getting 253 likes. Let's see here. Do one or two more here. Lost says, quote, Ron McDaniel is a loser. Republicans need winners, plain and simple. Moving on, unquote, getting 72 likes. And truth be told, I'm, I'm scrolling, folks, and yet I still can't, I'm not seeing a lot of support for her or anyone really pushing back. See, Malcolm Flex says, quote, this victory belongs to Vivek Ramaswamy for sure. He's making the party back already. I'm quoting 84 likes, despite the grammar ineptitudes. Let's see here. Update for your emu. Who? A plus marketing. The profile picture is in fact of an emu. Though I don't think emus could type properly. Perhaps if they use their beak. But I'll just say this alleged emu says, quote, Trump called it and Vivek knows it. VP, I'm quoting 30 likes. So overwhelming positive support for this decision. And again, it'll be interesting to see who takes her place and who can be more effective and what the, what can they do in order to make the party more effective. Because again, there are a lot of rhinos are also pejoratively known as Republicans in name only where they run as a Republican, but then they vote as a Democrat. Well, just changing the leader of the RNC, that still doesn't change those people are in political power. 
perhaps I'll do more to highlight and illuminate those folks so people can appropriately vote them out or primary them. It is fascinating that you never see Democrats who are Republicans in disguise. It's only Republicans who do that, which also I suspect is another reason donations are decreasing. So it'll be interesting to see. Let me know in the comments, who do you think would be an exceptional fit for the replacement for Ron McDaniel? As always, be fascinated here what you have to say. Good old technical difficulties here today. Let's see here. There we go. Oh. Oh, apologies. Other interesting political news. You have Vivek Ramaswamy on the border bill with most of the funds going to Ukraine going viral. Now, this comes through his personal ex Twitter account, and he says, quote, they call it a border bill, yet less than 20% is allocated to our border, and there's more money allocated to protecting Ukraine's border than our own typical swap, swamp protocol, unquote. And yeah, that is yet another example of the government ineptitudes, or simply, they, they're not, you might not debate if they're inept or if they're just, they just don't care about you and I. If you look at the breakdown, the allocation, they have $60.1 billion going to the Ukraine for their their border to be protected. Yeah, well, and also be embezzled. You also have Israel gets $14.1 billion, which I would debate they at least are a strategic location ally as well as a business partner. When you look at the e-commerce and a lot of companies we work with are headquartered there, which they have some of the best cybersecurity personnel and products on the planet, bar none. Now they get $14.1 billion. The U.S. border gets $20.2 billion. Humanitarian aid gets $10 billion. Indo-Pacific gets $4.8 billion. Red Sea Conflict gets $2.4 billion. And they have a big chunk that just says other at $6.7 billion. And that infographic was USA from USA Today. And they source was from the Senate. Jeez Louise. Billions upon billions upon billions of dollars. Jeez Louise. And again, I don't think anyone's too surprised by this. I... I almost debate someone, people shouldn't be disappointed because they, it's just the status quo. We've seen this time and time again, so it's not necessarily news, it's more of the same. Now it is new that Vivek and you have other people who are, I suspect they're starting to increase the amount of press around these topics where, I mean, wind back the clock a couple decades ago, perhaps it's rose tinted glasses or I wasn't just as politically connected. You didn't hear about this as much. So it's being more brought to the forefront, I believe. Now, going to the comments section, you have Paul Zazupa saying, quote, the border bill isn't even necessary. Joe Biden could just reinstitute the same measures that President Trump had in place, and that would instantly make things better infinitely at the border. But Biden won't have all the illegals for their votes, unquote, so it won't happen. I got 92 likes. Elon Musk simply replied, exclamation point, exclamation point. He got 2,000 likes for that. I was going to say, that's not really much of a statement that... I was going to say that uh, exclamation points, 2,000 likes. They also have Mark Rudolph saying, quote, I can't take this anymore. This quote on bill is just a sham, no matter how you call it. Biden undid the border on January 20, 2021 with a pen, no law, no Congress. He can redo the border today with a pen, no law, no Congress. This discussion should be about one topic, impeachment. I'm quoting 204 likes. Now, that being said, never going to happen, especially because Republicans don't have the votes. So, I mean, you can, you can charge them, but it's not going to go anywhere. Because again, <laughs> there's a lot of Republicans that are Republicans in name only, and they don't have control of the Senate. So, I mean, you can do it, but I'm not sure how far it would really go. J.D. Sharp says, quote, we're sending more money to Ukraine than we're giving our Marines per year, and this is already after sending them $200 billion, unquote. They got 228 likes. Mason Birch says, quote, what's allocated for border is not for security, it's for faster processing of illegals into the country. Unquote, give 192 likes. You have Dave Berner, nemesis of Neocon, saying, quote, exactly the first clue that this wasn't a border bill was that they decided to call it a border bill. Unquote, gave 57 likes. And yes, that is the biggest red flag. Usually a good rule of thumb for politics is 
whatever they call Bill, it usually does the exact opposite. One of the most abhorrent, disgusting things in U.S. history in terms of political bills would be the Patriot Act, which I would argue is the most unpatriotic piece of legislation ever passed since it dissolved many of the privacies and rights that most Americans had. And yet, again, that got bipartisan support. Let's see here. War Monitor, who has an American flag and the Ukraine flag in their bro profile picture, or their name, they have the emojis. They say, quote, you call yourself a candidate, but was 100% for Trump, unquote, gained 48 likes. Well, I would also, I would argue Vivek was a much more authentic candidate than more than half the other ones. He also got way more support than people with less resources. I mean, Chris Christie, I don't know what he was thinking. But I mean, he didn't even peak at 3%. In the poll aggregators, or Vivek peaked around, I think it was 11.8%, which again, for someone who has no political experience, that's astonishingly impressive. Let's see here. Do a couple more here. John Hancock says, quote, U.S. government in a nutshell, and it's a couple sentences that says, quote, we passed a free soda for all act. Response, awesome. What do we get? When do we get our free soda? The response, free soda, question mark, this makes owning a dog illegal, unquote. Getting four likes, and yeah, not too inaccurate. Do a couple more here. <laughs> I'd have to break down the math because I don't think this is true. Outcome thinking says, quote, how much money is in the border bill? Enough to buy every adult in the U.S. a PlayStation 5, unquote. I did get one like, but it would be the most hilarious bad marketing for PlayStation in history if they were to run with that. I mean, they never would, but that's one of the most unusual analogies I've heard thus far. And I'd say it's moderately amusing. Let's see here. Do one, two more. Let's see here. Josiah says, quote, Joe Biden, bro, are you aware of this? This has to be some mistake. You love this country, this country joke. And one like. Let's see here. I'm trying to find. Let's see here. Yeah, I'm not really finding any contrarian statements or any. Anyone who's against the vague or who's overwhelmingly in support of the bill. We usually have a couple more contrarians in the comments section. So it'll be interesting to see, again, I'm not sure how, these days I'm not sure how much public sentiment or support really affects political decisions. Because again, people have very short memories and most of them don't aren't politically active. But yeah, look, that bill, I mean, you look at the breakdown, it's, I mean, the biggest single line item in that bill is for Ukraine. And yet they're calling it a border bill, which, again, we shall see what comes from this. But let's just say I'm, Pessimistic, to say the least. Now, going on to the business blunder of the day, you have General Motors to recall about 323,000 heavy-duty trucks due to tailgates just popping open. Now, this is perhaps even more detrimental when you consider what General Motors does. They are a large automotive company, but look at the breakdown of their profits. An overwhelming majority of their profits come from trucks. Very similar to Ford Motor Company. There's a reason Ford doesn't make subcompact little mini cars. You don't make a lot of money on those. They're priced, they're priced very competitively with other manufacturers. Truth be told, they usually lose money on those. It's more of a lost leader for the industry. Now, trucks and SUVs, that's where they make so much profit. It's the gross on those vehicles is gross, pun moderately intended. I remember when I used to be in the automotive community, a Chevy Cruze, which used to be a great four-door little sedan. I love those little things. Came with a stick shift, great vehicle. Now, those, when a dealership would sell it, that was, a, again, compact, four-door, economic vehicle. I think the price point was on $17,000. Great first car. Those vehicles, dealership might make negative $482 if they were to sell it as is. The only way they made money was with financing and accessories. And the sales reps would get like $100 gift cards from General Motors. Those things were terrible. Contrast that with a truck. So you got the Chevy Cruze, you're losing about $482. A truck, you'd make ten thousand dollars in profit. Now the individual sales rep wouldn't make that. That's to the dealership and it's split. But that's how much of a difference there is between the profit margins between a little car and a truck. 
So that's especially why this is a big issue for General Motors, because again, that's their main profit vessel for the company. Now, this comes to us thanks to the Detroit Free Press, which I'm actually shocked they still have press or Detroit. Nevertheless, huh, that's a city pun. Let's just say my my family came part of my family came from Detroit. Yeah, we don't visit. Now, they noted that GM is requiring more than 323 heavy duty pickup trucks for tailgates opening unexpectedly. Now, this is because of the electronic tailgate release switches can short circuit and open the gates while the vehicles are in park. Which, again, hilariously inept. It's a truck. Again, I know most trucks are garage queens these days. People don't haul with them. They don't use them on farms. They're six-figure luxury items. I understand that's the use case for a lot of owners. Now, that being said, it should be designed to be used in the fields and on construction sites in hazardous or not easy or not convenient climate settings. And yet, a sensor can just short circuit. Now, they note that the recall covers certain Chevy Silverado and GMC Sierra 2500 and 3500 trucks manufactured between 2020 and, or model years 2020 through 2024. Which, again, those are the heavy duty ones, even more profit, more price, higher price point. And again, those are the ones where you're supposed to be hauling stuff, you're supposed to be you know, using them. Now, the National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration says the documents posted on the website that water can get into the switches and cause the taillights, tailgates rather, to open while in park. The agency says that it can result in unsecured cargo falling out of beds, creating a road hazard and increasing the risk of a crash. Which, so they used a switch that wasn't waterproof or just wasn't properly installed? Again, it's a truck, it's gonna get wet. And yet, the tailgate can just fall down because water gets to this. Really? Now, GM advised owners to check that the tailgate is closed and latched before they drive the trucks. Dealerships will replace the exterior touchpad switch. Owners are to be notified by letter starting March 18th. Or, just tune in the show, and not all the business blunders, but there is an overwhelming amount of business blunders from the automotive community where we talk about recalls. Now, GM dealers also have been told to stop selling affected vehicles until the repairs are made. Ooh, how pissed are the issues right now? You're not allowed to sell your most profitable product. That's awful. And that's also why you see so many family dealerships where they own multiple brands. They don't just sell General Motors products. A lot of them also sell Ford, Chrysler, also Stellantis known as these days. Now, they also say that that has received 136 complaints about the tailgates opening unexpectedly. GM reported one complaint of a minor injury and three complaints of a minor property damage. So, again, there's a silver lining in life. Usually I tell people, if you squint hard enough, you'll find a silver lining. Now, in this case, thankfully, this doesn't affect the drivetrain, which is, you know, the heart and the core of the vehicle, you know, the engine transmission. That's safe. And thankfully, even more important, no one has died and no one's been no one's been long-term affected negatively physically by this instance. So again, a little bit of silver lining, things would be a lot worse. But this is your most profitable, important product. Again, GM is losing money left and right on EVs. Eventually, they very well may make a profit. Again, in the aggregate, if you long-term, you could, after you set up all the infrastructure necessary to manufacture the vehicle, eventually they, I suspect they will hit a profit point, maybe Q, maybe Q4 this year with their EV segment. But again, this is what is fueling the company, the most important product you sell. Again, I don't know what they do for quality control. I don't know how much they test it. Perhaps the best test of a General Motors vehicle would be just to drive it down downtown Detroit, which granted you would probably need a lot of liability insurance for that because they're not bulletproof like the Tesla is in Detroit. Well. That'd be a big value add. And again, the dealerships aren't going to like this. And again, GM is an indirect sales model. They sell through the dealerships, partially because of legislation made in the states. So again, these dealerships now have an incentive to sell the competition because right now they can't sell that vehicle. So they're not happy. The consumers aren't happy because again, this is a, these trucks are no longer cheap. Ironically, trucks were invented as a cheap vehicle for farm equipment. It was cheaper than a car. Now, we have trucks that cost over $100,000, $100, easy. They option it up to $150,000. It's astronomical. It's more than a house in some cases. And yet, 
you have an instance where you have to take one of the most expensive purchases you've ever made in your life back to the dealership to have this installed. And yes, it is free to the consumer. True. Technically. You don't have to pay. You're not waiting, taking out your credit card or even more rare, taking out some silver dollar. Well, you shouldn't use silver dollars. It's actually worth something because it's real money or it's not fiat currency. But it's one of those things where you're having to go there. They'll repair it for free, but you're still driving there. Which again, gas ain't cheap thanks to a myriad of federal regulations. But it's also your time. Your time is worth something, folks. And you have to drive all the way to the dealership. Heaven forbid this is something where the dealership has to keep it overnight. Then you have to worry about getting a loaner, having a friend drive you. I mean, hopefully this is a one to two hour fix where you just swap out the parts. You go in, maybe get a cup of coffee, have your laptop and do some work. That's usually, truth be told, that's what I usually do. But again, to have your most profitable, important vehicle recalled and so something so seemingly simple to actually prevent just a little extra quality control, that certainly is the business blunder of the day. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in today. Again, I'm trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of February. So if you click that button, I greatly appreciate it. Also give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, or just a comment is a great way to give me some additional feedback and sharing also does help with the magical YouTube algorithm. Lastly, don't forget to take the time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone, just stay safe and fight the good fight.